Okie doke, so how do we model emissions of local pollutants over time? Well, let's go back. Oh, and this is based on my paper from 2020 in the European Economic Review. And we're going to go back to our workhorse. <laughs> okay, and we're going to ask ourselves, unlike Brock and Taylor and Stokey and Andreoni and Levinson, we're going to start by asking ourselves, like, where does pollution actually come from? <laughs> okay. And for the most part, it comes from the use of natural resources, things like burning coal, burning oil, etc. Okay. So, and of course, then the whole by production thing comes out naturally from this setup that we if the pollution is carbon dioxide for instance it's just in direct proportion to the burning of things like coal and oil if it's sulfur dioxide it's in direct proportion to the burning of the coal but we can also quite easily do end of pipe removal okay just as a couple of examples how do we model this Well, let's take our workhorse model, drop capital. Well, actually, if we go back to the picture, yeah, we did have capital in that one. <laughs> okay, drop capital and drop the oil. Okay, so what have we got? We've still got the coal and the wind. Okay, assume that the pollutant is carbon dioxide and the coal power is cheaper than wind in laissez-faire. Okay, without any policy. Imagine that we want, for some reason, to maximize polluting emissions. What do we do then? <laughs> okay, we put all our efforts, we send everybody to the mines to dig up coal, put it into the power stations and burn it off. <laughs> okay, we don't send anybody to the final good production sector at all. There's no production of final goods everyone goes here okay you can see if we had capital still in the model we would send some people to make final goods to use as capital in this sex segment in this sector of the economy and there'd still be no consumption okay okay so if we're trying to part a ppf let me just switch over just give me a second here. Okay, so if we're trying to plot a production possibility frontier over the final good and polluting emissions, we just got one point on it. So if this is pollution and this is the final good, I can't remember what um, notation I'm going to be using shortly, but let's call it X. We've just got one point. If we want to maximize polluting emissions, we'll end up with no final good. Well, no consumption of the final good, right? So that's the point. We can't produce more pollution than that. Okay, so. Okay, so imagine we want for some reason to maximize polluting emissions, blah, blah, blah. What is final good production? Zero. What if we want to minimize emissions? Well, in this model, the emissions are carbon dioxide, there's no capital, we just use the windmills, okay? And then we will get some final good production and we'll get zero emissions. So that gives us another point on our... Um, Sorry, I still haven't got the hang of this. Yeah, that gives us another point on our PPF out here. Okay, zero pollution, positive production. But we've said that coal is cheaper than wind. So there must be a point somewhere in between with higher net production and positive pollution where we basically don't use wind power, but we use coal power in the sort of just the right amount given an optimization problem and so on to maximize net 
production, but without caring at all about pollution. So in between, there should be some kind of curve like this, right? And normally it's going to be convex or concave or whatever, convex. Okay. So that is our production possibility frontier. We can produce any points on this curve or inside, but we can't get to the points outside there. Okie doke. Sketch a PPF over the flows of the final good, net flows like consumption, and polluting emissions. Assume labor productivity increases exogenously. What happens to the PPF? Well, it moves out, doesn't it? But if it's labor productivity increasing, it turns out that in intensive form, per unit of effective labor, <laughs> nothing's happening, right? Labor productivity increases per unit of effective labor, which is labor productivity times labor. Nothing happens. This curve is going to stay exactly where it is in intensive form. Okay. Right. What about utility? So if P is going up this way, Q will be going down this way. All right. And if utility is a function of consumption, X, net production of the final good, and environmental quality, Q, what should the indifference curves look like? So where do we really want to be? We want to be up here, don't we? And where do we not want to be? We don't want to be down here with zero environmental quality and zero X, zero consumption. So, indifference curves should look something like this, right? Okay. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Uh, let me show you. There we are. Oh, they don't really show up. Damn. It's the red color didn't work. Um, or maybe it's the thin lines. I don't know. The, the indifference curves should look something like that, right? So what's the optimum here? It's there, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, what happens? Okay, if utility is a, what happens to the indifference curves over time in intensive form? Okay. So, if we drew. Hmm, I'm not sure this was a good idea actually with the intensive form. Let's just have this map of indifference curves and drop the intensive form and think like what does this PPF look like when labor productivity is very low? Then we basically oh, sorry. <laughs> what does the PPF look like when labor productivity is very low? We basically shrink it towards the origin and it looks like this. And I'm going to draw myself a helpline here because the peak, it, the points should expand like this, right? I don't, I don't know if you remember from like math one or whatever, rays through the origin and things. We got, this is a ray through the origin. So the PPF is going to move out like this. And in laissez-faire, pollution will just increase. But given optimal regulation, here the red lines are more or less horizontal. So here pollution starts from zero and moves. It's pretty much on these maxima. 
but as we get richer, the slope of the PPF starts to increase and we start to move off that ray and like this. Okay, that is the EKC. Okay, I think I'm going to drop the intensive form stuff. In this case, when given that the um, PPF hits the y-axis at finite slope, but the slope of the indifference curve when it hits the axis will keep going up and up, we're guaranteed to hit the axis. Pollution will hit zero. Okay, But if we only had the coal, if we didn't have the option of wind, then it would be a lot more complicated, which we'll get to shortly. So I'm just going to pause there for a second. OK, so if wind power is available and totally clean, this model tells us that we will eventually adopt wind power completely. We will shift from cheap and dirty to expensive and clean as we get richer and we will clean up the environment. OK, but what if only coal power is available? And if we have a Cobb-Douglas production function and a standard damage function, <laughs> well, then in the short run, well, well, when productivity is low, the cost of extracting coal dominates the damages from burning coal. And then we have, so the total cost of coal is basically the cost of extraction, which is constant, and we have increasing polluting emissions. But when we're very rich, the cost of the damages dominates the extraction cost. So the total cost of coal is basically the damage of burning it, which grows at the growth rate. So now the social cost of coal grows at the overall growth rate, and given that we have Cobb Douglas, we expect constant coal use and constant emissions. Okay. So that's if there's no alternative to burning coal, no end of pipe way to clean up. And if we think that the damages from coal or the willingness to pay to clean up grows linearly in the growth rate, and if the production function is Cobb Douglas in coal, then we would end up with constant emissions. Okay. So that, that's a little bit like the Stokey case that we worked through earlier. Okay. Let me see what we've got in the notes. Right. I think I'm going to. Stop this video there.